say between 22 and 24, do you think she could have honeypotted those three guys with a camera going? Uh, yes, I think that's absolutely correct. And I think she would have used um, some very young people to do it. Well, what about using herself? Uh, she might, yes, I think she might have been involved because honeypots can be set. Well, let's imagine how a honeypot would be set by the oh, my sister, my sister. members of the Down Low Club in Chicago, which, if I understand correctly, there are two kinds of creatures creeping around the Down Low Club, which was launched, as far as I can tell, around 1994. You have your heifers and you have your cake boys. Good. Give my voice a little rest. Can you just describe cake boys and heifers for the audience field? Yeah, I got to masticate and swallow hard. Uh, in Chicago, a gay black homosexual, pardon the redundancy, the redundancy being gay and homosexual, not black. In fact, there's a lot of really good black people, just like there's a lot of really bad white people. And then there's the brown people, the yellow people, the red people. 95% plus of people are great, including atheists, agnostics, Muslims, Christians, uh, the world's a nice place and the world has room for all those people, but sadly for some of those people, heaven does not. So if they want to get to heaven, they have to do some pre-flight planning. But I'll get off that and get back to Chicago. To speak in terms of a human body, food goes in, watch this, your mouth. There, I just swallowed my cabbage so I won't get cancer. Um, food goes in your mouth after you masticate it. Then it goes into your digestive tract, and then at some point, it's uh, expelled. Uh, speaking of expelling, the, ex the ex expulsion point of a human body, let's pretend like the human body is the United States of America, which is not dead yet, Circo. Um, if the Vatican and the city of London were going to pump effluence into the body of the United States of America, they certainly would be most efficient to put the enema tube in Chicago and start pumping the excrement in there. Notice I didn't say Rahm Emanuel, uh, Barry Swatero, the Dailies, the Rodhams, or the person with, with one left wing, no breast, and some abundant thighs. But uh, Chicago has a bunch of gay people that hang around a church, and it's called the Trinity Something Church, the pastor, who is a servant of Satan, his name is Jeremiah White. Oh, I slipped. I mean, Jeremiah Wright, in this case, wrong. Um, the penalty for being a pastor who serves Satan is three times the penalty, according to my understanding, uh, for someone who is not a pastor and they just want to serve Satan. Of course, my sister would be qualified there, I believe, because she's been serving Satan since 1969 or earlier. Uh, after she was recruited at the East-West Center at the University of Hawaii by Obama's grandmother's friends. And if I seem to be sort of slow in my speech, it's because I'm going back to 1966 when I was on the beach at Fort DeRussi, which is a military reserve on Waikiki, and my sister had to disappear for 20 minutes to 30 minutes. Uh, and my cousin, who was a female, was beside me on the beach. And it's her testimony today that she, as a female, got the distinct impression my sister had absented herself for a brief lesbian encounter. Is that true or not? I don't give a rat's ass. I'll stick it out there. And if my sister wishes to object, she can come over to 401 Main Street, Plum City, um, or she can call me at 715-307-8222. And just to demonstrate that that 303, three, let me try it again. To demonstrate that 715-307-8222 is my phone number, watch how quickly the phone rings, and I won't answer it, so I'll save minutes for whoever calls me. But uh, David, my phone's going to talk about cake boys, which are the black homosexuals, heifers, which are the excuse me, the male homosexuals are cake boys. The female homosexuals who are so ugly, they couldn't attract a male even if they were heterosexual. They're called heifers, the significance being 
Chicago used to have a big slaughterhouse, and if they were slaughtering bovines, they made cows, and if they had an open heifer, they might get her too. An open heifer is simply a female bovine who's been serviced by a bull and hasn't settled. So, what you have there is a definition of... David, can you hear this? Yes. What is it? It's your phone. Yes, it is. So thank you, whoever just called me. There, and it's beeping now. It means three seconds ago this room would have blown up if it had smack sonic in it. But uh, some things can't be attacked. For instance, airliners like Malaysia 370 and Malaysia 17, uh, one of them was attacked by Serco, saved by the United States Air Force, flown to Diego Garcia, and then they opened the doors and they saw 200, and let me get this number correct the first time, and somebody in the chat room correct me if, if the number of passengers and crew was not 239 on Malaysia 370 when it parked at Diego Garcia on March 8th of this year's later, I said in print that by 1900 on the 17th of July, another Malaysian airliner would go down. And on the count of three, everybody think about exactly what day Malaysia 17 went down. And if you're having a hard time focusing, it was the 17th of July. And I've had a lot of people ask me, how I knew it would go down on the 17th of July. Uh, and because of the secure nature of some of the communications I'm involved in, I'll have to say it's the same team. Notice I didn't say what's set up, did I, David? That's right. And I didn't say anything yet about the 239 decomposing corpses that were on Malaysia 17. And obviously I would be uh, probably irresponsible to suggest that those 239 decomposed corpses and the 40 uh, fresh killed corpses with no blood in them, uh, I might be irresponsible to suggest that Serco operated Malaysia 17 as a drone and they were trying to drive it into Ukrainian airspace and smack sonic it and somebody with a cell phone, uh, that somebody, I'm gonna put a couple things out there that most people haven't heard of before. When Malaysia 370 was taken off course by Serco, it was in the vicinity of SQ-68. David, yes or no, and I'll promise to be quiet shortly thereafter, but yes or no, do you remember what SQ-68 is? Singapore Airlines. Very good. Uh, when Malaysia 17 was stricken, right when I said it would be on the 17th of July, I think the statistical probability is that another Singapore flight was directly overhead Malaysia 17, and I'll just pull this out of thin air, a flight such as hmm, SQ-351. And now watch, the, I'm gonna set, uh, we're gonna have a race here for, it's, uh, I don't have my glasses on, but it's about 34 minutes past some hour. Uh, all you chatters, get ready to Google. And first one to get the results of this Google wins a prize. Uh, SQ-68 plus MH-370 plus SQ-351 plus MH-370 17 plus M-C-C-O-N-N-E-L-L. -L. And just so this is fair, I'm gonna Google it too. Ready, set, go. David, over to you. Yeah, that's right. Well, the question generically about these kinds of coincidences is, of course, if you control the ad hoc waypoint systems that were developed for Boeing aircraft, all of Boeing aircraft by Serco, uh, you can take a plane immediately on a right next waypoint and impute some new waypoints that send the uh, hijacked plane to a destination like on the ground. I'm going to have to rest my voice a little bit. I've got a bit of a cold here, Phil. Can you take over? Sure. Why don't you go? Do you have a microwave or not? I'm not going to put my head in it if that's what you're suggesting. No, but why don't you go warm up some water and get some hot water so your throat settles down. All right. I'll, I'll just take a break. Okay, take a break. Bye-bye. I'm busy Googling and masticating here. We're listening to the sounds of silence, and I'm done masticating. I wonder if anybody else Googled the search terms yet, and if anyone forgot the search terms, uh, 
I'm Googling them right now and I'll let you know what the results are. So here we go. MH17 SQ351 and my last name, which is M C C O N N E L L. Let's see if anybody else happened to have Googled that. Uh, Age of 66 says Fielder David, but how the heck did they get away with all the black haired people when Flight 17 was supposed to be 80% or so from Holland? Uh, it's real easy. Malaysia Flight 17 never operated on the 17th of July. That was a drone. It was filled with the corpses from Malaysia 370 and the recently missing Dutch people. And that's a good question from Agent 66 because there's a video that was shot 15 minutes after the remains of the people showered down on the Ukrainian uh, countryside. It's really, don't, if anybody can find the video at YouTube, and I'll go try to find it, and I could not watch it all in one setting because it was too sickening. Uh, so that's a very good point from Agent 66, who may occasionally appear in our fiction as the Malaysian persuasion, um, which would suggest in someone's mind that this person, Agent 66, may or may not have been in Malaysia from the 17th to the 20th of April this year when I was there. And keep in mind, even if I were... Uh, invited by one group, let's just uh, chink or heeb or guinea. Um, if this group of people invited me over to Malaysia and they were insistent that I get plenty of rest so I could speak clearly, what would happen when I was supposed to be resting if I was talking to this group of people? Aha! Uh -huh. Would these people be upset if they paid me to come and I talked to these people when I was over there on their dime. I don't know, you can always ask them. But uh, when it comes to Malaysia 370, there's a gigantic chink in their armor, and that chink is Circo. David, over to you. Yeah, thanks, Phil. So I think we should start reverse engineering these crime scenes to see if there's two elements which would suggest a bureaucracy is behind the conspiracy. Uh, one is that it's a time-triggered event where sufficient time has been given to assemble what we euphemistically called in Ukraine experts of unknown provenance. But more familiarly, we could take the people on the Pentagon lawn after the bombing of the Pentagon's U.S. Navy Command Center Somehow or other, there were a line of people, carefully coordinated, moving across the Pentagon lawn with bags, picking up evidence and taking it away from the crime scene, which is a crime, of course. So who would have been in a position to deploy those characters in advance of the crime? They didn't just show up. In fact, in the background, it shows that the lintel, the roof line of the Pentagon, had not actually collapsed. So it was less than 20 minutes after impact. So someone knew exactly when the impact would take place, and they also had access to the people who could remove the evidence. Now, that was part of what is known as a continuity of government exercise set up by... America's bureaucrats, in fact, the senior executive service, whose boss, de facto boss, was Field Sister. And the job, at least the one that uh, has been adopted by, or the task or the objectives adopted by Field all of our elected officials, president, vice president, various other characters in their cabinet, how could we ensure that the government of the United States would continue uninterrupted? Well, if the fourth plane had hit the Capitol building, you'd have lost most of the congressmen and senators. So America was intended for decapitation on the taken over the administration of the American government as the bureaucracy, headed by the senior ex 